The new academic centre is designed to provide practical help to the governments of developing countries to support growth and improve their ability to cope with the effects of the economic downturn. Mr. Alexander said the current world economic problems meant that as governments come under growing economic pressure, they will be less able to invest in infrastructure, education and health. Also, aid money from donor countries is likely to be less. The World Bank has estimated that the combined effect of these pressures could result in a 2% reduction in developing countries' growth rates below that which we were expecting for the coming year. If that prediction were to come true, then we can expect to see as many as 80 million more people forced to live lives in extreme poverty as a result of the present financial crisis. As the President of the World Bank, Bob Zellick, has put it so eloquently, this is not only a financial crisis, it's a human crisis as well. So as the economic climate threatens to force people into poverty, we need even stronger political leadership than we have seen in the last decade to ensure that the progress we have made is not now reversed. The International Growth Centre will be a unique resource, giving developing countries a hotline to the advice of world-class experts on finance, agricultural yields, the energy sector or policies for the economy as a whole. We know that economic growth is the engine for reducing poverty, but as a job it is the best way out of poverty for individuals, growth is the best way out of poverty for nations. That's in essence why we are all gathered here in this lecture theatre this evening to launch the International Growth Centre. The economic downturn will of course affect developing countries in different ways, but we know that it will unquestionably affect each and every one of them. Now in a different time and a different era, indeed in response to the Great Depression of the 1930s, President Franklin Roosevelt turned to what he called a brains trust, a group of Columbia professors who played a key role in shaping the policies that were to become the New Deal. I want the International Growth Centre to make available now some of the world's finest economists to governments of developing countries to help them to find practical ways to stimulate growth as the New Deal did in America in the 1930s. The International Development Secretary said there is the need for a coordinated global response to the current crisis. We have a moral obligation to do what we can to limit the human toll of the present economic downturn. And we must do what we can to ensure that our efforts to reform our international architecture, to increase trade and to tackle climate change, also support the efforts of the bottom billion left behind by years of economic growth as we look ahead to this new economic era. I believe that there is a huge potential prize for this growth centre to make a timely and important contribution at a critical moment for the global economy. So it is a genuine pleasure for me to launch it this evening. Thank you very much indeed. The new centre will bring together academic experts from the LSE and Oxford University in a unique partnership which it is hoped will help tackle some of the most difficult development challenges on earth.